Now let us look at question number 16. A flask contains a mixture of compound A and B. Okay, there is a flask containing A and B. Both compounds decompose by first order kinetics. The half lives of A and B are 300 seconds and 180 seconds respectively. If the concentration of A and B are equal initially, the time required for the concentration of A to be 4 times that of B is. Okay. See, this question can be solved in two ways. Fine. I will uh, give you both the ways to solve this question. First of all, see in one case you are given 180 second as the half life, second case you are given 300 second as the half life. The cheat over here is normally you will see the time when both the half lives come out to an equal value that should be the answer. So, what I am trying to say is if you look at the table of 3, if you look at the table of 1.8 or 300 and 180, you will see they match up at 900. So, the right answer should be 900, but let us not do the guesswork. Let me give you both the ways in which the question can be solved. So, first the cheat way. Suppose we are starting with A, right, and there is 100 particles of A, there is B, 100 particles of B. Since it is following the first order kinetics, fine. So, the half life is independent of initial concentration. So, 100 converts to 50 here in 300 seconds, then this 50 converts to 25 again in 300 seconds, this 25 converts to 12.5 in 300 seconds. Okay. So, I have taken the time of 900 seconds and what I am getting for A is 12.5. Now, let us look over here, 100 converts to 50 in 180 seconds, 50 to 25, another 180, 25 to 12.5 another 180, then 12.5 to 6.25, another 180, 6.25 to 3.125, another 180. Now, if you add the total time taken, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that is 900 seconds. Now, what is the concentration of B, 3.125, what is that of A, 12.5? So, do not you think A is 4 times of B, right? So, you have got the answer as 900 seconds, option is fourth. But what is the other way? What is the actual way in which you should be solving? See, you have this formula that n is equal to n naught e raised to power minus kt, okay? where k in can be calculated as ln 2 by t half, fine. Now, what is the option given to us? we are given that A is 4 times of B, initial concentration is same, okay. So, I am writing it out for A first, this is A naught e raised to power minus ln 2 by T half is given to be 300 into T, agreed, fine. Now, this is equal to 4 times of A naught because the initial amount is same. So, for B, I am taking the initial amount to be A naught only, e raised to power minus ln of 2 by 180 into T, right? Okay. Now, see A naught goes by A naught. Now, what I will do? Take the log on both the sides. So, this will be minus ln of 2 by 300 T this is equal to ln of 4 minus ln of 2 by 180 t. Now, this thing goes on the left, you will be getting ln 2 t 1 by 180 minus 1 by 300 is equal to ln of 4. Do not you think we can write ln of 4 as 2 ln 2, right? So, ln 2 gets cancelled out, fine. So, what is the value of t now? See, there is 2 multiplied by 180 multiplied by 300 divided by 300 minus 180 which is 120, okay? Now, see 2 into 300 is 600. So, 120 
into 5 is 600, 180 into 5 is 900 seconds. Okay, dear friends, so there are two ways in which you can solve the problem. This is the actual derivational way, this is a cheat, you can use either of the two. The answer is coming out to be 900 seconds, that is option number 4, okay. Now let us look at question number 17. In the following reaction sequence, the major products A and B are, okay. So this reactants are given to us, the reagents are given, we have to find out what is A and what is B. Let us solve this question. Let us see what is happening step by step. See in the first step, when I look at this compound, you observe oxygen is having a lone pair of electron over here. This AlCl3 is helping in the generation of the electrophile. So, what is the electrophile being generated over here? See, this carbon now behaves as an electrophile. Okay. Now, this carbon will attack on the benzene ring. So, this is step number 1. In step number 2, this will be attacked. Supposing this is the hydrogen which we are substituting. So, basically what will happen? This carbon will substitute this hydrogen. This H plus will then be attacked by the lone pair of oxygen and AlCl3 will come out. Because AlCl3 has done the job. So, now this positive charge attacks over here, okay. So, what, are, what is it that we are going to get? We will be getting And as this H is attacking to this O, you are going to get a carboxylic group over here that is COH and AlCl3 you have obtained. So, this is your product A, right. Now, this A is to be reduced by using zinc amalgam in the presence of HCl. Fine. So, this carbonyl group will be reduced and this is the product. I hope you remember this is Clemenson's reduction, fine. And by this you are understanding that normally they are asking such mechanisms from the name reactions only, right. So, this is what we have got, but this is not B because after uh, this reduction, they are also reacting with H3PO4. So, what this H3PO4 will do, this will uh, help in the generation of the electrophile. It will take out this OH from here and you will get the positive charge on this particular carbonyl carbon. So, now this will, supposing here you are having a hydrogen, right? So, this carbonyl carbon will then substitute this hydrogen. So, you will be getting this product, okay. So, this OH and this H plus is actually moving out as water. So, this is your compound B. So, have a look at B and A. Now, let us see which is the right option. Starting with fourth, this is fine, but how come they have changed the position of the alkyl group? No, it does not work out. No, here they are not having the carbonyl group. In the second, they are having a pi bond, even this is not working right. Yes, this is the right. This is the right answer. This was A and this was B, right? I would say it is a good question. You need to have a thorough uh, knowledge of the basic mechanisms of organic chemistry, okay? Let us move on to the next question. Question number 18, 
Now, what does it say? Consider the following reaction N2O4 is dissociating to give 2NO2, delta H0 is plus 58. So, it is an endothermic reaction. For each of the following cases A and B, the direction in which the equilibrium shifts is. Okay. So, basically, we are talking about the Le Chatelier's principle. First, it says that the temperature is decreased. See, it is an endothermic reaction. If you are decreasing the temperature, the reaction will go in the backward direction that is towards the reactant. Towards the reactant, okay. We are having choice number 2 and 3. 1 and 4 move out. I normally, uh, you know, try to do this elimination technique. It really works, okay. Now, second is pressure is increased by adding nitrogen at constant temperature. See, you are keeping the temperature constant. So, at constant volume, if you increase the pressure, there is no effect on the reaction. So, no effect means no change. So, the right answer is 2. In the first case, it is moving towards reactant because of decrease in temperature. In the second case, pressure is increased at constant volume. So, there is no change on this particular equilibrium, right? So, the right option is 2.